Why are we talking about partnerships? I've been working in this field since the mid-90s, and I'm still shocked by the interest that partnerships raise. When I first started working them in the mid-90s, I thought it was going to be something that was here today and gone tomorrow. Like many development paradigms that are brought into play, they seem to be buzzwords that we use and then forget about. But partnership, for some reason, has stayed with us. And we can see that way back in 1992, when we first started talking internationally about sustainable development, uh, partnership was mentioned as a key approach to environmental and development change. The interesting thing here is that we were looking at relationships mainly between governments and NGOs and primarily focused on the environment. Ten years later, and I was at this session of the UN in Johannesburg, the, uh, it seemed as though partnerships had arrived. Everybody was talking about them. The idea of both mandatory, but more interestingly, voluntary partnerships between not just the UN and NGOs and government, but also, and most particularly, the private sector. And that these organizations would come together to address global challenges that the world was facing. Most recently, in uh, Rio Plus 20, in 2012, we've seen everybody talking about partnerships. But the idea seems to have broadened into something much more fluid and flexible. We're looking at partnerships that are alliances, not just between organizations in the different sectors that we work in, but also with people, with individuals. Another tendency that we've seen is a move away from what have traditionally been called, and quite controversially, public-private partnerships. Uh, when these began in the 1990s, the work that I was doing, and Ken Kaplan was also working with me at that time, we saw public-private partnerships very much promoted by the Tony Blair government, looking at ways of assisting the public purse and allowing services and products to be provided with the help of the private sector. So we saw them as contracts in which there was very limited stakeholder engagement, and they mainly worked within legal constructs. What we have seen over time is that this view of what a public-private partnership is has moved towards something much more flexible, to what we now seem to be calling uh, multi-stakeholder, multi-actor partnerships for development, which involve more stakeholders, they're not built around contracts, there's this idea of them um, operating within legal and regulatory national frameworks, but the partnership itself and what it delivers tends not to be regulated, it's much more open-ended. And now partnerships are absolutely uh, on the radar screen with the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, yesterday, we heard about Ban Ki-moon's Road to Dignity report and the fact that he had picked out these six main elements of sustainable development. And one of the central ones was partnership in order to catalyze solutions to address sustainable development issues and challenges. And built around that, and something we're becoming increasingly interested in in the development world, is what is being called, and it's probably a very Anglo-Saxon term, wicked problems. Problemas retorcidos no suena muy bien. But that's, that's the idea. And these are seen as problems that are incredibly complex, difficult to resolve, very challenging, changeable, unique, and requiring a number of actors in order to address them. And more and more, we're seeing partnership as a solution to address these wicked problems. Okay. I have a quote here from the government of Australia, who seem to have taken this very seriously. And what they're saying is that wicked problems and addressing them requires both collaboration and innovation. Years ago, I wrote a, a booklet on why should we work in partnership, because for me, there was something about if the incentives for all partners are not clear, it's hardly worth doing. And again and again, one of the things that came up and seems to be coming up 
more and more was this idea of partnerships are a useful way of working because we can promote innovative responses to the challenges that we face. Recently, in ITDUPM, we have conducted a study with the Inter-American Development Bank on partnerships for innovation for wicked problems in access to basic services. So very much touching on the previous um, presentation that we had before lunch. I'm not going to go into the details of this. You can find it on the website. You can look at the five case studies we wrote about. But some of the lessons that we learned that are pertinent for our discussion and that I'm going to get the speakers to look at in more detail are, first of all, that we need partnerships that are tailored for the specific context in, what, in which they work. One size does not fit all. Okay. The next thing that we found is that Partnership arrangements are often, they don't happen without support from skilled intermediaries or facilitators. These can be organizations or individuals, but they are the people or groups who push the connections, who make them work and bring the sectors together in order to achieve a good partnership. We found also, and I think this resonates with what we've been hearing over the last day and a half, that uh, partnerships are more and more responding to whole value chains. So you're looking at the beginning and end of a value chain. So for example, in the study on waste management, how waste management is generated, the processes it goes through, and how we end the chain that it, it is involved with. So we need to look at partnerships that address things in a much more holistic manner. Uh, the assigning of new role to users, I think, was brought up yesterday throughout the discussions that we heard. The importance of hearing the voices of the users and the people who will be adopting the services that partnerships generate. Uh, there is definitely a link to new arrangements with the private sector. Jody will touch on this to a certain extent. But this idea of partnerships is generating inclusive business and social entrepreneurship. I have some concerns about that, but maybe we can discuss this during the course of the um, uh, presentation. The next thing is this idea of institutionalization and the perhaps uh, controversial idea that maybe partnerships shouldn't last forever, that they should be transitional mechanisms that are institutionalized in everyday practice so that we don't need them anymore that the state or other organizations take them on and run with them. And finally, the idea of uh, partnerships as allowing us space to constantly explore, experiment, learn, and change. So the license almost to fail as well in order to move forward. 